Good morning and thank you for joining us today. Uh, I want to spend a few moments talking about the disastrous extent of city finances and potential errors with the need to investigate them and the deep fiscal overhaul required, including in-depth zero-based budget reviews for all departments, cost-benefit analysis process development, debt refinancing negotiations, and increased access to financial information. I've heard a lot talk about spending money, but I haven't heard a lot of candidates talk about our finances. And it goes well beyond the capacity of a municipal campaign to accurately forecast city financials. This isn't a federal election with a team of accountants hired to cost out party platforms. And unlike other candidates, I'm not going to ignore the huge financial issues and pretend that the city is even close to having sustainable finances. There's a lot of work to do and a lot of work to recover from this mess. Other candidates stating they have fully costed finances are in some fantasy land and don't have a firm understanding of the fiscal realities. Scott Gillingham was on the Finance Committee since joining Council in 2014. He spent six years as the chair. And during his time, Scott is responsible for a 106% increase in property taxes. He has more than doubled the city debt and drained our reserve fund. His budget had multi-million dollar math errors. Gillingham has announced that he will simply increase property taxes at an even larger annual rate of 3.7%, plus increase your frontage fees, which combined, uh, which combined add up to 7.5% annually. These are the facts, and they are irrefutable. Scott Gillingham is not a fiscal conservative. He's Brian Bowman 2.0. For the record, I was the first councillor to demand financial planning to address the realities of the COVID-19 pandemic and introduce the city's COVID-19 financial plan and recovery strategy. This is something that Gillingham takes credit for all the time. These are the facts. You can check them. Despite Glenn Murray telling the media in Ontario that he was solely responsible for reducing the bureaucracy in the city of Winnipeg by 20%, the city's civil service increased by close to 15% under his reign. Again, these are the irrefutable facts. Murray will simply continue to twist the truth and talk about the good old days. Remember when he quit? There are limits to tax increases. Residents may move to surrounding RMs or other provinces to find lower taxation, low, uh, resulting in low, lower overall tax to run the city efficiently. And we've seen that in the recent Canadian stats. It showed that West St. Paul and Niverville were two of the fastest growing communities in Canada and that the Winnipeg central population had dropped a little bit. Inflation is impacting budgets and our global, as are global economic conditions. There are many factors to uh, consider in setting appropriate rates for residents. As mayor, I will do the work necessary to end arbitrary tax increases based on guessworks and political promises. Taxation should be linked to data, well-managed finance, and alignment of the public expectations to reality. I will also implement zero-based budget reviews at the City of Winnipeg. Calgary has done this and saved nearly $100 million in yearly operational savings. Now that would fix a lot of roads here in Winnipeg. That would help improve our snow clearing. That would take care of a lot of things. My calls for a zero-based budget review began in 2019 and were consistently ignored by Gillingham, Bowman, and all members of the EPC. Apparently, it was too much work. Let's look at the facts. Zero-based budgeting is effective. It's efficient and results in immediate rewards. And as mayor, I will implement zero-based budgets and make all of the information public so that you can see how we're progressing and you can see where the pay savings are. They will be posted online and we will do it for every department. This has never been done by any politician in the city of Winnipeg in the last 25 years. I will make sure it happens. I understand how to take care of your finances and I will take care of them and do the work necessary to ensure you are getting the real value for your money. Thank you. It's not a dumb question, uh, and I, I apologize because I often will, I talk about a zero-based budget like everybody understands it because we've done them a lot in the private sector. And what that means is you go into the department and you understand where every dollar is being spent. You go through it line by line 
to make sure that we're not putting money or allocating money to a product or a service that we don't really need. It's not an effective uh, service, it's not an effective product. So it allows you to go in and clean up years and years of budgeting because what happens at the city of Winnipeg today is they just give us a PowerPoint presentation and some numbers uh, and even if you look at the past budgets, there's basically the same wording, the same goals, same good object objectives, and there's some cuts to some services. But we're not telling people where we could have cut. We're, we're being given one suggestion. So a zero-based budget will allow you to go into the department, find efficiencies, and properly allocate funds to what is necessary to meet the needs, values, and expectations of residents who are paying for those services. Does that help? Yes. Okay. You want to, and let me explain that. So uh, I didn't support the four-year budget because it had multi-million dollar errors in that, and I had mentioned that to Gillingham several times. And even university students came and presented on budget day mentioning the multi-million dollar errors in our budget. But he passed it anyways. So I have agreed to the fact that in 2023, there's a 2.3% property tax increase. But that is supposed to be used for infrastructure, road renewal, and to pay back BRT fund uh, money. However, under Gillingham, who put these taxes in place, that money wasn't used for roads this year. That money was redirected because of poor budgeting. So I am committing to holding it at 2.3% for 2023 because that will give us time to effectively review the city finances. It would be unrealistic to go into the mayor's office and say, I can fix that budget in 90 days before you have to vote on it. It's unrealistic and it's not fair to residents. And, and any CFO or accountant in this city would tell you that. It's just not possible. So we'll keep it at the 2.3, but what I will commit to is that 2% will be used on roads and infrastructure, period. It will not be redirected like it is today. It won't be redirected. And the 0.3 will go to BRT because we have to pay our debt down. And then in 2024, 2025, and so on, we will have already implemented the zero-based budget reviews, and I anticipate an actual reduction in the cost of operating the city of Winnipeg once we find all of the efficiencies that are possible. So what I want to do is go in, do the zero-based budget, and that's what I will do for every department. Other cities have done it. Other cities are doing it today, and it's been effective. And I will find out where the savings are internally in the operations and then look at the projects. There's multiple things we have to look at. And that's what really frustrates me in this campaign is you have 11 people running and they're all making wild promises of fixing this in the infrastructure, fixing that, and we're going to get into housing and we're going to take people's homes. All of it just to get a vote. They don't have the ability, obviously, or the skill or the knowledge to know how bad the city of Winnipeg finances are today.